Don't care if we ever come back to oh, let's root, root, root for the home team. If we don't win, it's a shame. Cause it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Live from the studio, you are watching the Daily Edition with your host, me. And I am Jimmy Seleski. Um, ain't the coffee hot? Ain't the beer cold? We're coming in here a little bit earlier than usual. It's only like 11 a.m. Somehow on opening day, that is still me running late. Um, the game is at three. Uh, my brother should be here any minute, hour, day now. Who knows? I told him I'm here recording the uh, Thursday show early because I want to have time to get downtown before the game um, and, and, and enjoy a, a nice day of festivities. The weather is shitty. That's baseball weather, baby. We love shitty weather. That's Orioles weather. Yes. Um, I don't. Need, I, I think we're playing the Angels. I don't even know who we're playing today. I, I should have probably looked into that. Um, folks, we're taking it easy, as you can see today. I even went so far as to eat breakfast, which I rarely do, especially during my time of fasting. But I, 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 I for some reason finished half a bottle of that Espelon tequila that I had laying around here last night. And uh, I was hung over this morning. And I hate that. I hate that. Now that I actually have a daily schedule, uh, I cannot stand when I drink the night before. It's not that often anymore, which is good. But uh, I feel like whenever I just find myself in here for too long with no distractions, I just wind up drinking whatever is on the shelf. And uh, I regretted that this morning. But as I said, we are here. A large day of fun and festivities is upon us. But before I get into all that, let's um, kind of kick back. Uh, we, we, we got real serious, I think, on Tuesday because of the Key Bridge incident. So we haven't really had a chance to just kind of go through the archives and look at some videos. This is something we usually do on Twitter Tuesday. Um, it is Thursday. And we will do just that. It's X Thursday, baby. X Thursday. Actually, I don't mind that. It doesn't alliterate. It doesn't rhyme. But there's something about it that just pops. So let's dive through the archives and see what's going on here. Um... Let's take a look at this one. Okay, so this is good because this has to do with wrestling. Real wrestling, not fucking WWE, you assholes. This is real wrestling, college wrestling. I, as many of you know, was a world champion wrestler in high school. Just kidding. I qualified for states. I went to the state tournament in Maryland uh, and lost both matches. So uh, not quite the world's greatest wrestler of all time. But I'd still ball your shit up if you're listening. So let's just get that straight. Um, I didn't really follow college wrestling this year, unfortunately. And I actually would get annoyed at people in the past who exclusively followed basketball because I thought it was disrespectful to the sport of wrestling. Um, however, I must admit that wrestling is not exactly the best spectator sport. You really have to know what's going on to enjoy wrestling. And even then, it's fairly enjoyable. Um, but the college national finals happened, I want to say this past weekend or the weekend before. I want to say this past weekend. And this clip has gone viral. This is Brock Hardy of Nebraska versus uh, Jesse Mendez of Ohio State University. And I find it unfortunate that this is the clip that goes viral. Um, because there's so many awesome things that happen in wrestling, people getting thrown, people getting fucking flipped around, people getting pinned, people getting whatever. Uh, and instead we get a guy getting put in, uh, getting his legs like put behind his head, Riley Reed style. And that, that's a real good look for, uh, the brand of wrestling, I guess. This, you know, wrestling's major conflict as a sport is that we have to contend with the public perception of many stupid retards 
that uh, wrestling is gay. And uh, wrestling is not gay. But clips like this don't exactly help. So let's take a look. Yeah, but... Yep, we've got the count going. The splatle in the quarterfinals. This move is called a splatle. And there is nowhere Hardy can go. Uh, this is a real move. Position and the clock and it sucks. There's really nothing you can do. Right. You, you can see he's got... When someone's in near fall criteria, there's no stalemate in this at all. You see he's got his, yeah, yeah. his leg there wrapped around this one and then he's got his arm wrapped around that leg and then the guy's head is caught between his body so he's just got him like i mean this is a it's considered probably the most embarrassing move to get caught in um but make no mistake both of these guys are good this this match is a three two match up until this point this is the very end of the match with 45 seconds left in the third period um it, the problem is he can't even get pinned from this position. You have to get both shoulders on the mat. He can't get pinned from this position. But also, there's a thing in wrestling called stalling, where if you just like are obviously just like waiting out the clock, they will stop the match unless you have a person in what is called a near fall or near pin position. So if it if you are uh, reasonably working towards a pin, they will not stop the match. So this guy gets caught with 45 seconds in the match. They both know. He can't get pinned. And if you watch, he doesn't even try. He's just like sitting there like, okay. It's just, I just have to, both of them just know. He's not going to get pinned. And he's just looking around and he's just waiting. He's just waiting. From this position and the clock just continues to tick. You just ride. You cannot stalemate this. When someone the near fall criteria. Yeah, thanks ref. I just said that. Stalemating this at all. Probably because you said that. Um... So, yeah, again, that's that's unfortunate. Nobody wants to be the guy. I mean, I would say one clip of wrestling surfaces to virality every two years on the Internet. And so once every two years, people remember that, like, actual wrestling is a thing. And this is, for the next two years, what everyone will think of when they think of wrestling, which is great. But the only thing less great than that, the only thing better than that, is if you happen to be this dude who is getting splatled. And once again, this guy would also ball your shit up, make no mistake about it. So uh, just, just take it for what it is and leave it at that. Moving on. I saw this this morning. This is pretty... I, 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 I genuinely believe that Who Wants to Be a Millionaire may have been the best game show. Besides maybe Jeopardy. I think Jeopardy is probably the game show of all game shows. It's the king of game shows. I never got into Wheel of Fortune, really. I don't even understand it. I, I mean, it, it's like, it's been on since like 1903. And I, to this day, have no idea, like, buy a vowel all that shit. I'd like to guess the word. I mean, I kind of know it, but I mean, the best game shows are just uh, TV versions of people's favorite games. And what are people's favorite games? Crossword puzzles and trivia. Now, Jeopardy is the best other than the fact that you have to do that stupid what is thing. Who is John Lennon? What is the Treaty of Versailles? Why do you have to do that? Why is that, Jeopardy? They say it's like you're asking a question. You're given the answer to the question. Uh, and so you have to say what the question is. I guess that's it. Why? What is the significance of that? Apparently, Alex Trebek, the original host, who is now deceased, was like, a, was like a genius. He had like an IQ of 140 or something. Um, I'm not necessarily convinced you have to be a genius to host Jeopardy, though. I'm pretty sure the answers are there, right? Like, you don't have to, like, know all the answers to host the show. You just have to be able to read. Um, so Alex Trebek may have been overqualified for the game show Jeopardy. If anything, he should have been 
a contestant. That's kind of where you really get the payoff of being a genius is being the guy playing the game, not the guy reading off the questions. I could do that. And I know for a fact, not for a fact, hey, I don't want to sell myself short, but I'm pretty sure I'm not coasting around 140 IQ, at least 150. Um, but who wants to be a millionaire is probably the best like show of a game show because Jeopardy is just Jeopardy, you know, but who wants to be a millionaire was a whole thing, you know, and a lot of these game shows come along and they suck. Nobody cares, you know, especially now. I feel like the seventies were the time when all the game shows were around, but I remember watching who wants to be a millionaire, uh, at my Yaya's house after Sunday dinner. It would come on. The only flaw with this show was it, it, they would draw it out so long. Like, it, you would probably get like five questions an episode. There would be all kinds of like, you know, interview shit in between. It would be like, and before we get to the outrageous film, outrageous film, welcome, outrageous film. I like Regis. Outrageous film. Before we get to the first fucking, actually, sorry, before we get to like the third question, because, okay, up front, I understand the interview. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, I, I, I work in tech out in uh, uh, Madison, Wisconsin. I got a wife and kid, Cheryl. Uh, we're just so happy to be here. It's a great opportunity. I, I really can't, I can't even believe I'm here, man. This is like crazy. You know, every game show interview. And then just get into it, dude. I don't even know what this guy's favorite shampoo is. I don't even know what color his first bicycle was. So tell me, John, what was the name of your first girlfriend? Hey, look who it is. Oh, boy. Look who it is. I told you he'd be here, and he's here with some thriller lights. Right over there. Dom is completely off camera, but he's, he wants to know. There's also a camera. I'm here. Camera three. Camera three. Dom's avoiding every camera somehow. There's three cameras facing every possible yes. direction, and you're somehow evading all of them. I couldn't do that if I tried. That's like in the spy movies where they have the lasers going around, and you're like tiptoeing over each one somehow. I could rob this bitch and not get caught without even trying. All right, hold up. Okay, now your mic's on. Talking to Mike. I said I could rob this bitch and get away with that without even trying. I got some Evy Willie minis for the, to Hell prime yeah. the occasion. Hell yeah. Good luck robbing this place. If you rob me, you become poorer. <laughs> Your credit score goes yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually like if somebody robbed me of my negative money. Ugh. Somebody just robs your credit card. They owe $7,000. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> All right. So what's, what's the topic we're on? Oh, we're just, I'm just kind of lean back, lean back, lean back. Just kind of taking it easy, playing some clips from shows and shit. Um, I was about to get into Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. There was this clip of this dude who, uh, one second, this clip of this dude who used his final lifeline on the million dollar question and people thought he needed it. Oh, but yeah, he, he like called his wife. He's like, I just want to let you know we're gonna, I'm going to be a millionaire. Yeah, it was his dad. Um, so this is that clip. All around the world, he's won a million dollars. Um, <laughs> I like to call my parents right now. Sure. Use my lifeline, call my parents. What are their names? Oh, um, my father. I'll talk to my father. Your dad's name is my father. <laughs> uh, hi, dad. Hi. Um, uh, I don't really need your help, but I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to win the million dollars. What if he ran out of time? <laughs> because of the applause. <laughs> and I'm sorry, time's up. Uh, because the U.S. president appeared on laughing is Richard Nixon. That's my final answer. Dick <laughs> Nixon. Well, my gosh. Well, what can I say it. except Debbie, you're That's going to Paris, so this is the final answer heard all around the world. He's won a million dollars. 
Call your dad uh, back, faggot. You lost. <laughs> hey, dad, I just want to let you know I actually got it wrong. It was, yeah, I totally blew it. It was Eisenhower, apparently. It was Eisenhower? <laughs> was TV even on? <laughs> Fucking, I don't even know. Um, so that is a great clip. We are moving through it, folks. That I The caption to that is the most baller shit I've ever seen. And I have to agree. But also, I have to wonder if those things are produced. I wonder if that was planned. I don't know. I respect it either way. <laughs> John Carpenter was the boy. And another fun fact that I learned in the Twitter threads, um, that was the first lifeline he used. He did not have to use a single lifeline the entire time. What were the lifelines? It was call a friend, and then there was also... I think you could only have like one of each. It was like call a friend, and then it was there was 50, another 50. one. 50-50. 50-50, that's it. Get on the mic more. Uh, yeah, 50-50 was a big one. I feel like that's the best one, though. Phone a friend. The, the reason why Who Wants to Be a Millionaire wouldn't work now. Can you imagine calling somebody? They're like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the thing is, now people can Google. That's kind of, if you think about it, that was kind of crazy that like this show was out at a time when like, like if you called me right now, you're like, Jim, 30 seconds. Uh, it's a $500,000 question. Who is the president of Libya? I'd be like, all right, one second. Let me just, <laughs> president of Libya. Uh, nobody, because they're a shithole country. <laughs> You've won a billion dollars. <laughs> Joe Biden. They have no president. <laughs> Libya. It used to be Muammar Gaddafi. But no, 50-50 was good. Phone a friend wouldn't work anymore. This is a game show that I feel like they should bring back. Genuinely. Uh, they try, like, stupid-ass game shows. They have so many stupid shows now. Have you ever seen those commercials for, like, The Masked Singer? Yeah, I don't even understand what the fuck that is. It's just somebody sings, and they try to guess who it is. I don't know how to. I don't know how to do a podcast with this mic stand. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <laughs> I'm not used to looking over really this. Through it, looking over this, this is still the Daily Show. Yeah, this is the Daily Show, folks. You can always tell if it's the Daily Show or the podcast based off of if I'm using this stand or or this my stand. or my stand. Yeah, man, it's crazy, man. This is a podcast. This is how podcasts go. We have these big mic arms. This is a show. You're watching LFTS Daily. Um, anyway, Mahedi bailed today. Classic. I knew it. And the thing is, the thing... Are the Eichholz is still going? Yeah, yeah, because they're actually going to the game. Oh, well, uh, what the fuck? That's not... What are we going to do with them? We're going we're gonna to drink... Call before. them and be like, how's the game? <laughs> I'm going to phone a friend. <laughs> like, $500,000. Um, no, we're going to hang out with them beforehand and then afterhand. And it's just you, me, Lucas... Yeah. Lucas and the city of Baltimore. True. You know, everyone. See, I'm wearing Papoul's Orioles jacket, though. That's tough. OG over the, and then this one just says Baltimore. So Baltimore Orioles. I love that. I could have wore my black Orioles jersey, but then it would have been two black and orange Orioles. Yeah. I only have one pair of pants working at the moment, um, and they're black. And my only Orioles garb is this shirt. <clears throat> so murdered out blacked out and I, I and i only have one <laughs> i only have one like uh warmth wear thing besides my pea coat which is black and that is that hoodie which is also black i don't own anything that i can wear which is my like, hoodie by the way but i that bought you it. bought for me yeah yeah and you left it behind in the house i left a lot of things behind in that house yeah by the way we got a long weekend ahead of us that's next weekend right no it's this weekend dude How's that this weekend? What's because this oh, weekend? Because <laughs> I'm moving out on April on March 31st, and that's Sunday. And are we going to Aunt Lisa's for Easter? Shit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess Saturday we got to move out. Saturday's the day. Saturday we are moving out, folks. I'll let you know to where. <laughs> when to the we... easy storage across the street. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sounds. The thing is. Whenever I pitch this idea to people, and all you loyal listeners have heard me whine about this before, but Dom has not. Um, Can you toss me a thriller? Yeah. Uh, I find myself constantly trying to explain away even the stuff that does make sense. Like, even when I tell people, dude, I live across the street from a storage space. I don't need to rent a U-Haul truck to transport furniture across one road. 
It <laughs> wouldn't even make sense. It would literally be stupider. You like, I would put it in the truck. I would drive. Did you a, call them yet to see if they have space? They got space, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They're literally called extra space. <laughs> yeah, true. I think they got, we got space. Some, yeah, we got some more in the back. You guys have, happen to have any extra space? <laughs> no, not at all. You call easy storage. You're like, can I store this? It's like, yeah, but it's going to be difficult. <laughs> it's going to be dumb. <laughs> hey, it's not going to be easy, buddy. You also can't store anything. Here. Yeah, don't be storing stuff in here, all right? <laughs> um, but even with that, people will be like, dude, you're not going to get a truck. Like, you can. They don't say that. Nobody has the fucking balls to just say that. You're just arguing with people in your head. Yeah. <laughs> People, I bet I bet you somebody's gonna say this. No, no, no. They, I get the eyes. I get the, I get the like, mm, kind of the same. I, I, I know these eyes because I saw them when I told people I wanted to do music professionally. I saw it when I told people, any basically any time I've ever expressed a goal, you mm. see people's eyes. They're like, mm, like they don't, like they, they don't want to say this is a dumb idea or they don't believe in the idea. So instead, you just kind of get that like side eye kind of nod and that's what i get i get the being homeless thing i understand that <laughs> i understand why people uh give me the side eye for that but it's almost like anytime you do anything that isn't the way everyone else does it people just kind of don't know how to react like they don't even consider the sensibility of it. Yeah, like for instance, doing a daily show in a garage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was like, oh, you're 31, right? <laughs> hey, lots of people have daily shows. <laughs> <laughs> lots of 31 year olds have daily shows in garages. Okay, I'm not the only guy I Look know. Look it up. Look it up. Go on YouTube. It's full of dudes exactly my age <laughs> that have daily shows. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be quite the weekend i'm gonna go out friday i think and the other thing is i knew here, here's the other thing just as much as i can depend on my friends for thinking i am an idiot for whatever future idea i have i can also depend on them flaking out and not ever trying to do fucking anything dude now i yeah what was Mahedi's excuse He's going to go to the gym instead. Motherfucker, I'm the one who told you to start going to the gym this week. I went to the LA Fitness on Bel Air Road with Gabe, Eicholtz, because I ran into Gabe at the Towson one. And I was like, and I kind of fit, he, we go the same time of day. So I was like, I, how come I never see you here? And he was like, I was like, what time do you go? He's like, noon. I'm like, yeah, me too. How come I never fucking see you? He's like, oh, I've been going to the one on uh, Bel Air Road. It's so much nicer. It's brand new. And I was like, dude, what? what is a nice gym? You know, like, it's yeah. like, I didn't know what I was missing. So he's like, dude, let's just go out to the, it's only like 10 minutes. You go out 695, take Bell. It's right off 695 on Bel Air Road. I get out there and it's fucking awesome. They have like the turf field inside, like sleds and all the machines are brand new. It's not crowded. They have like five squat racks. You're never waiting for anything. I was like, dude, I had no idea how shitty the Towson LA Fitness was. And then I see one of Mahedi's friends, Artie, walk in. And uh, I was like, wait a second. It's a Friday, like at noon. I figured these people have jobs, like already has a kid. And I was like, wait a second. I'm pretty sure Mahedi is a member at LA Fitness. And he like lives right around here. So I text Mahedi. I'm like, dude, aren't you a member? We go to the one right by your house. He was like, yeah, but I haven't gone in a year. I was like, would you be down to come with us at like noon on weekdays? And he was like, yeah, sure, whatever. I guess everyone works from home now. I don't know how that works. Yeah, dude, I... You might be the only person that doesn't. I know. I work in people's houses all the time, and all of them, without exception, work from home. And it is insane. It's literally a bunch of people not working. They're just in meetings all day. Yeah. All they did was talk about what it would be like if they were working. <laughs> They're like, yeah, well, the third quarter report's looking good. I got to get back to John about that one. Uh, make sure you hit Chris up and see if he knows what's going on with the... Uh. No one's ever fucking working. They're all in a meeting like, all yeah, day. I work from home today. It's like, no, you didn't. It's, it's like, like it's yeah, insane. but can you imagine it's, if I did? It's like, yeah, the Sopranos with like the mafia guys would have like the no work jobs. They would like show up to construction yeah, sites no work, and, no not, show. and not work so that they could collect a paycheck. At least they had to show up. Yeah. Work from home people just sit at home. And talk about what work 
Could be could like be. <laughs> <laughs> they imagine work. No, it's it's like my like Joe in the band. He he doesn't work in the office. I don't think, and he'll just like. We'll, we'll just come over and like John Burkhart, but everyone, all of, none of us have jobs, I guess. And they would come over and just be, they would just have a laptop somewhere and we'd just be working for like three hours. And then one guy would get a call for like 10 minutes. Yeah. Like this is your work day. Yeah. Kayla works from home. I was sitting at home making breakfast and she's like just talking to her freaking boss for like an hour, like an entire hour talking about something to do. I'm like, so is 80% of your day talking about working? You guys just sit there and like, it's literally just a bunch of people trying to justify their jobs. And then they wonder mm -hmm. why, like when the economy takes a 2% descent, mm -hmm. why 500,000 people get laid off in these jobs where it's because it's like no one actually needs you. Yeah, you're completely, <laughs> you're completely useless. And, and that is the reality. That's what I was talking about when I was texting you guys yesterday, you and Lucas, and I was saying that you can pretty accurately determine someone's political lenience based off of the type of job they have. And people whose job has what they said agency, meaning that you are directly uh, connected to the output. Like if you're a car mechanic, you are a painter like yourself, you're a musician, you do something like that. You're a business owner, especially any type of business where like your income and your livelihood depends directly on the amount of work that you put in those people tend to lean conservative. And if you have a job like the ones we're discussing, where you're literally just getting paid to get paid, and your entire goal on a day-to-day -day basis is just do the bare minimum so you don't get fired and continue to collect your paycheck. So everyone is in there. Basically the same way little kids play house, they're playing work. Yeah. They're playing work. Hell yeah, and then you have a Zoom meeting for four hours about something that could have gotten solved in 10 minutes, and those are the people that tend to lean more liberal. Um, and if you examine that, like I was saying in the text, uh, what the fuck was I just talking about? Dude, I lose my train of thought so easy. How when people don't actually have a direct correlation to working, yeah. they tend to lean more liberal because they sit there and they expect their income to just be like, yeah, I just show up and I do what I'm supposed to do and then I don't get fired and I collect a yeah. paycheck. Yeah, and that's how the world, and they think that's how the actual world works. But more so than that, and it's a subconscious thing because I don't think it's a malevolent thing, but they see, Jesus Christ, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy God shit. had one mini of Evan Williams. <laughs> turns into mom -om. I'm too distracted by his Where fucking. am I? <laughs> when people are more liberal, you know, they get, they get, you know, the thing. They really, get Sponge of Allegiance. Fucking, fucking Joe Biden. Jim on, Biden. Jim Biden. Yeah, you know, man, you know. They start walking in circles. When people can't remember what they're talking about, they tend to lean conservative. <laughs> no, I, I don't know why it's, I think God doesn't want me to All say right, this third time's up. a charm. Let's go. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. A world. <laughs> in a world. <laughs> in a world. Where you can achieve more by working harder and you have a direct relationship to your income based off your output and therefore you have an opportunity to increase your input through output, that is a merit-based type of system. If you suck and are actually useless and the only job you could function in is a job where actually it's just a matter of whether or not you show up and somebody can write it off, you don't want a world where your livelihood and income is dependent upon your actual performance and competence. Yeah. You don't want to live in that world. People that work from home are essentially just uh, higher. They're, they're basically like a fucking, what's the word I'm looking for? A glorified version of welfare. They're just it like, is. Like literally. It is. It is. And, and, and I don't even know, like... They try, I think a lot of people went back to the office after COVID because a lot of companies realized that, dude, th like, I, it's a nice, fun idea to think that people are just as productive at home, but they're fucking not. But then it begs the other question is, was this always how it was and we're just now seeing it because it's at home? Was was office life this useless as well? Yeah, office works probably just a bunch of people that, had to pretend to look like they're working all day, you know, put in nine hour days, probably get four hours of actual work done. But now they're at home and there's not someone that can catch them fucking off. So they just got Netflix on. They're like, all right, 
Well, I have to do X, Y, and Z today. That'll take me about three hours to do. I have to be yeah. logged into this computer for nine hours yeah. to get my money. So I'm going to fucking move my mouse every 30 minutes so it doesn't fucking auto-log me out. I'm going to watch fucking Squid Games. And then, you know, before I got to go, you know, I'll put in an hour here between episodes, hour there. I mean, it's literally, dude, the, like... And everyone, what is the everyone I know, here's the thing. Everyone I know that works from home will tell you that it's fucking bullshit. But anyone that's listening to this right now that's working from home is going to sit there and try to justify their job in their head. Oh, yeah. But when they're sitting around drinking with their friends, they're like, dude, it's awesome. I literally fuck off yeah. all day. Yeah. But then when you call them out on it for being lazy pieces, you're yeah. like, no, dude, you know what would happen if I didn't log in? Nothing. Nothing. The Nothing same thing that happen. happens when you do fucking log yeah. in, dick. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that would happen is you'd lose your job, and that's the only thing that would fucking happen. No, dude, I it, it's... It's honestly, I mean, if you think about how much money is just going towards zero productivity, just absolute zero productivity. And that's also what leads to, you know, and you're getting to that age now too, where, where you'll start to notice that you get to this kind of, is this all there is phase in life where you realize like, okay, all the stuff that I was told I was supposed to do in an effort to achieve this thing and now I'm there, like in the case of like, okay, I got good grades in high school. I went to college, a good college. I got a nice, quote unquote, real job, adult job, big person job. And now I work that job. And then you realize it's like, okay, that's, that's the end of the line, right? Yeah. There's no, there's no like, unless you have, are in a career where you're actively involved in advancing yourself You've worked your whole life and been sold on this idea that you're just going to go get a job. And then you realize that not only um, are you doing something that you don't really actually care about in most people's cases, but also you are completely insignificant in the grand scheme of things. And, and people wonder why they lose a sense of self-worth. At the very least, like, you know, when I'll work with dad or something and we'll, we'll, we'll uh, like paint a kitchen or something and... You see that job through from start to finish. You see it with the walls completely ripped off. And then when you look at it, he'll, he'll send me like pictures um, of the finished job. And there actually is like a feeling of like, hell yeah, that looks good. And you know that you did that. Like, you yeah. know that someone's kitchen is like that because you put that work in. Like if I show up to somebody's event or somebody's bar and I play there, I know that I'm actually making a difference in that night. Like yeah, you people, actually created something that's I actually did tangible something in the world. Of yeah. value, my my presence here matters and that does yeah. bring you a, a level of fulfillment that I think we take for granted as opposed to people who yeah, it sounds cool to literally just do nothing all day. Um, but it's got to do something to your psyche. This idea that you are actually literally a worthless human being. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you are literally worthless. You don't do anything. That's not saying that you don't have uh, a, a value in, uh, in your friends' lives and your social connections and things like that. But in terms of like keeping the fucking world moving, keeping the ball rolling... Sit this one out because you don't do anything. You don't have, you don't contribute anything to the way this shit is going. Yeah, unless you your move job, your mouse every 30 minutes. Unless your job's just a means to an end where like you actually do something extracurricular. But if you're just fucking waking up. Uh, every Mayor day, Brandon Scott on the podcast, extracurricular. Extracurricular. <laughs> nuclear. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I knew I, I was hoping that got fucking brushed over the second not I said it. Not a chance. It. There's one thing I will remember. It's certainly not going to be what I'm about to say. No. <laughs> it is to but, fuck with you. You know, when you just wake up, clock in, fucking put in your hours to a job that like you are a speck in to where if you like I said, if you didn't clock in, the only person that would notice was the guy who gets paid a fucking salary to only do one thing, which is to notice the people under yeah. him clocking in. Yeah. And he could get fired, too. And he's but, also just yeah, moving his mouse. He's also or, just moving his mouse, being like, is he logged in? All right, good, whatever. Like, that's what he's his job is. Unless you're doing, like, on the side, too, it's like, yeah, like, you know, I do construction and stuff, and I do take pride in, like, when I see something I built, or, like, you know, I drive by Bandito's, and we built that, and, like, I go in and eat there, and I'm like, holy shit, like, I fucking, I remember being up on a lift and fucking installing that thing up there or whatever. And then afterwards, then you have to have something else. Like I do the comedy and the music thing. Some yeah. people just have nothing. Some people just don't do anything beyond working, getting a paycheck, 
And then everything else they have is just fucking free time to scroll on reels or watch Hulu or fucking. Yeah. And maybe I should go to music festivals once every month. And yeah. Post, maybe oh, I should kind of um, walk back a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> maybe you're not worth. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it depends on the context of the conversation. If you are a person who just, look, I don't have a passion for what I do, but I get a good paycheck. I, I just don't want to make any waves. I show up. I do the bare minimum. I make my money. And then I use that money to pursue the other things I want to pursue. And you have like real goals and real hobbies. Okay. As long as there's some outlet in your life where you can actually see the reciprocal relationship between a give and take of contributing to the world and getting that back. But like you're saying... A lot of people don't have that. Like a lot of people don't have like even hobbies. Like their hobby is watching TV or even going to music festivals. I don't consider that a form of like, like if you're the kind of, you're just a perpetual audience member. Like if you don't have anything in your life where you are doing something, you are improving at it, you are making yourself better then like that, doing acid and watching a fucking DJ shine a light in your face for four days straight <laughs> in a tent is not you. That's not, that's not a thing. That's just, that's like letting loose. I'll but be your very fun. Your job, <laughs> your job is letting loose. What are you taking a vacation from? You're taking a vacation from moving a mouse every 30 minutes and sending one email. Oh my God. I got to get this email busted out before lunch. That's your whole fucking day. That's two sips of coffee for me, and I don't even have a fucking job. Dead air. <laughs> I don't care, man. Sometimes you got to leave that. I, I, when I listen to this show, sometimes at work, I fucking, there'll be like 10 second pauses. I'm like, are my fucking earbuds fucked up? And then you'll be like, anyway. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'm good. I'm a big, uh, I don't do it on purpose. The, the, they call them pregnant pauses. But like, if the pause gets too long, I will edit it you know you snip four seconds yeah out of it and but like, i still leave a good amount of pause i think <laughs> pause is a, dude it's a monologue i'm talking to myself sometimes you gotta let the world talk back you gotta say something and let god be like true <laughs> true word thanks god word to your boy um shit i guess we can take a look at a couple of videos here how that. long have you been doing this so far 38 minutes Oh, shit. Here is a video of, I thought this was nice. Alec, well, actually, I'll tell you what. We'll do this in reverse chronological order. This is that weird creep I was talking to you guys about yesterday, Rabbi Shmuley. What a fucking weirdo. And he's in an argument with Alex Jones, which I love. Um, yes. So this is this fucking... I hate this guy. Why won't you give the Jews any credit whatsoever? What is your problem with Jews, Alex Jones? Nope, you what go back. You? I don't, I don't have a problem. Because we have much better sex than you? What is it? <laughs> Listen, I Why won't you give the Jews any... Oh, my God. Dom, you don't, you don't have the context of seeing this guy in the past, but I fucking... What is your problem with the Jews? How much that's time you got, buddy? Palace, so this is the <laughs> How much time you got, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> it's just so fucking... I can't stand I'll tell this you guy. what. Go live at the Berkshires for five years. Yeah, get yeah, back yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, I can't wait to get out of there. Anyway, this is... I, I only played that video, A, because I find him so annoying. Um, but I wanted you to see Alex Jones now. But this is Alex Jones... Back in the day. Don't try to tell me this motherfucker wasn't a stud. Don't try to tell me Alex Jones was not fucking daddy. You say daddy. Oh, shit. That's here him. we are at a council member's house home uh, down here in Austin. And I'm not going to tell you their address or who they are, but you ought to see how overgrown their house is. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Very nice little neighborhood over there, I will tell you. Uh, yeah. Actually, was pretty handsome. I know, <laughs> fucking super it's handsome. Crazy, crazy. He talks about how he used to like, you know, is how the paper run around town and just kind of get a lot of like, story. you know, with a lot we of women when he was younger. I was like, yeah, right, Alex. I mean, granted, he is probably like five eight. Health though. department and environmental I don't services. Think so, dude. 
and two days I'm pretty later, sure he's short. That was a Dom's doing the classic guy thing where he's immediately trying to find. No, 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 no. I'm saying he's Sewage. definitely handsome, but like that's you know he's broke though. Oh, oh, yeah, he's bro I mean, he is after this. this is getting Again, we're not going to tell you the address down I'm here. I'm Googling it right now. Of this council member. We're not going to tell you who she is. But just for yourself. Oh, he's 5'10". Never look. mind. That's the hypocrisy. Much worse than Mr. Ellington. That's a big two total. inches. It is 5'8 to 5'10 is, is, that's a bit, that's probably the most crucial two inches you could have in a height. It's the difference between being short or tall. Because 5'9 is average. 5'8 is below average, 5'10 is above average. So it literally, statistically, and our minds pick up on bell curve patterns like that. It's funny you say that because the bell curve has most people sitting around 5'9. Not, not most people, but of any individual height, the most people are going to be 5'9. There's obviously more people that aren't 5'9 than are, if that makes any sense. But if you picked out any individual height, the most common height would be 5'9. And 5'8 like I said, is below that, and 5'10 is above that. So our minds pick up on that two inches as being like a difference maker because that is the difference between like you're a short guy or you're a tall guy. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't say tall because 5'9 is really brought down, thanks a lot. I think tall is when you get to six feet and up is when you can be considered tall. Like I'm, I'm six feet. I wouldn't, people don't see me and go, oh, that guy's tall. Yeah. But their mind does register me as like taller than most. I think tall, when people go, that guy's tall, that's like six, three and up. Yeah. Yeah. Six, three. There's a dude in the Berkshires who like, I'm pretty sure he plays basketball for Towson. Oh yeah. There's a couple of them. They're like six, seven. Yeah. They're like ridiculously tall. It's like insane. I wouldn't even want to be that tall. And it does make, yeah, it's, it's crazy because it really does put you in the mindset of a guy who is actually 5'7", five, 5'8", five, because there's as much of a difference in height there between someone who's 6'7", and someone who's 6'2", like you, versus someone who's 5'7", and someone who's 6' foot like me, or 5'9", or and 6'2", yeah. like you, where they're thinking that the whole time. The whole time you're sitting in the elevator with that guy, and he's towering over yeah. you. I feel like his girlfriend. And you're like, oh my god. Yeah, and your girlfriend's with you, and you gotta sit there and be like... <laughs> Yeah, I have my girlfriend. I'm his girlfriend, <laughs> and I'm just sitting there. He's probably fucking, probably. probably I mean, maybe sucks. maybe I'm it's 60. just because when you're taller, you're not as used to it. But short guys, I guess, kind of have to get used to that because they walk around like that. Well, they've never seen the world any other way all day. And yeah. like, I remember we were at uh, the tailgate. I was with Gabe and some people, and uh, Sapolica was there. Our friend Sapolica. Um, was there and she's like real short. She's probably like five three, five two, and uh, I just like kind of just squatted down to her height, and I was like, "This is crazy! Like this is what you see all day." Because like when you're in, a, especially when you're in a huge crowd like that, you take for granted that you can see over people over head, the yeah. crowd. Like I can see what's going on on the other side of the parking lot in the tailgate. If you're five two, you just don't. You don't know what the you're just in a mass of people it's like being in a forest like it's insane <clears throat> and you never think about that but yeah i didn't even think about that though that like some guy who's like five six is standing in the elevator with me just thinking like wow <laughs> wow who is this guy a giant <laughs> who is this man um but yeah and that's you have bones to, in here i have some in my core go grab them because i was i was just wishing i had bones Guys, we are, of course, lean back on a lovely Thursday. We're taking it easy. I'm forgetting what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm hungover. Uh, my brother's here. Um, and it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just one of those kind of days, man. It's a Thursday morning, overcast. No rules when it's overcast. Even the sun didn't show up to work today. Why should I? Um, there we go. There we are. A nice bone. May I interest you in a bone, sir? <laughs> bone zone. Bone saw is ready. I got you for three minutes. Three minutes of playtime. <laughs> so the plan, if anybody wants to find us downtown, we're going to start at Pickles. We're going to wait in line. Obviously. For way too long. Obviously. We're going to finally get a beer. Actually, no. I, they always have like vendors and shit. It's not that. It I really. I was actually shocked at how not 
crowded Pickles was last year. I thought it was literally going to be a fucking mob house, but I guess it must be like just crowd mentality where everyone thinks it's going to be a mob house, so nobody goes. But was that on opening day? Wasn't it? Oh, no, it wasn't. Yeah, I don't no. think it was. Never mind. It's probably going to be a fucking mob <laughs> it's house. It's going to be a fucking madhouse. <laughs> Dom's contention is that everyone in Baltimore thinks it's going to be crowded and we're going to show up and no one's going to be there because everyone's going to be a fucking ghost town. <laughs> You're gonna gonna show up. Tumbleweeds out front. <laughs> Nobody's going to be at the game. <laughs> the Orioles aren't going to be playing because they're going to think the Angels are going to think they're going to play. Um, no, it's going to be pop. It's going to be popping. Um, but it's going to be. Let me get that later. The appropriate amount of popping. Um, and like I said, man, you know what? I'm at the point now where I've almost just given up on my no fun friends. You know, the ones that are down to ride, let's ride. But like, I mean, there's only so many times I can try to get motherfuckers to do something and them just being like, uh, this, uh, that, uh, I'm pregnant. It's like, that was a fair excuse. <laughs> That's an okay excuse. But, you know, still, you can still party a little. Um, so these, this is what I'm left with. My brother, Lucas, Lucas, black Lucas, black Lucas, and actually black Gabe and Adrian. And, and they're down to ride. They're down to party. What the fuck is wrong with hanging out people? I mean, it's almost like when you get to my age, your friends take an adversarial view of hanging out. It's like planning a fucking vacation. Like, yeah. it literally is like the same amount of effort that it took when we were 21 to plan like a weekend Ocean City trip is now, that was less effort. That was less effort. We were like 20, 21. I would text people be like, yo, you guys want to go to Ocean City like tomorrow? People would be <laughs> like, yeah, dude. Uh, what, the Islander? Yeah, it's like $90 a night, just, you know, whatever. Now it's like, I can't even say, hey, you want to go get a drink <laughs> next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I got to like fucking, I got to like, fuck, it's, it's insane. I don't know, man. Uh, we go to the gym. Oh, man. I'm kind of probably going to lay low tonight. I, when are you not laying low? You work from home. You lay low all day. for You lay low for a living. You are a professional low layer. You're a professional mouse squirrel. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. What other clips do we have here? Since this is, of course, the clip show. The clip show. Uh, shoot. I yeah, guess... We, <laughs> dude, I, I'm a big fan of... Let's play this clip of Brandon Scott. This is getting a lot of... Was this the one we, like... Hey. Whatever. Joining me now is Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott. Uh, I will allow you, uh, Mayor Scott, if you choose to do so, to respond to the tomfoolery. Tomfoolery! Uh, on you for having the nerve to be black and also a mayor. <sighs> well, I think, listen, uh, uh, I know, and we all know, and you know very well, that black men and young black men in particular have been the boogeyman for those who are racist and think that only... Uh, uh, Straight, wealthy, white men should have a saying anything. We've That's been the boogeyman that, from oh. them since the first day they brought us to this country. And what they mean by DI, in my opinion, is duly elected incumbent. Uh, we know what they want to say, uh, but they don't have the courage to say the N-word. And the fact that I don't uh, believe in their... Watch uh, me untruthful and wrong ideology how much time you got buddy <laughs> proud of my heritage of who i am and where i come from scares them uh, because me being at my position means that their way of thinking their way of life of being comfortable and suffering and while everyone else suffers is going to be at risk and they should be afraid because that's my purpose in life and the, by, by the way, you know, the, the coded racism, before we even knew the nationalities of the men, Maria Bartiromo was out there talking about open borders and trying to somehow signal that they wanted to go after the brown people, too, because, of course, that is their other target. We know that the men who are doing this hard construction work overnight, trying to fix the potholes on this bridge, working very hard, uh, were Latino. And, and, and so that's now on the table, too. We know that this ship, which Latinx. came from Singapore, was piloted by a very heroic crew from India who's made a call saved lives not maybe saved lives, there, there, buddy. so this is a full-throated <laughs> attack 
But this is also what America is. It is people of multiple races who views. do the hard work <laughs> to make America work and literally make it work. Talk about the importance of this port um, and, and how quickly um, you believe it will be back uh, up and working. Well, first, I have to talk about those lives that we lost. Those folks came to this country to fulfill the American lost? dream, the dream that they say should exist for everyone. They know how many of them really were Latino. For them. They were working, filling potholes in the middle of the night so all of us That's that right. used that bridge could transit, had better transit. Uh, this port is one of the most important, not just in the U.S., but in the world. And these folks that depend on these jobs, <laughs> we are going to be working very uh, quickly alongside and following the lead of our federal government, our state government, supporting in every way we can to get this port open back up. But we have to do that safely in the right way to make sure that nothing else uh, uh, happens in, in, the, in the getting it back up and working. Uh, we're going to do that each and every day. Everybody is working here together. We are ignoring all the conspiracy theorists, everyone who's playing bridge engineer at home, who's <laughs> never even taken a class on engineering uh, and understanding that what this that is, is about true. is showing the world never once even and took again a class. <laughs> that Baltimore can't be broken, that we are, our spirit is strong and we will rebuild together and honor those who we lost. And I want to note that two of the, um, the those who we have been uh, now declared dead were Mexican nationals. Um, has there been any is there cooperation happening across that divide as well? Because obviously this is now an international uh, situation, uh, not just the United States, but Singapore and also the, Mexico. Oh, I'm sure Singapore. Is yeah, just our federal partners are leading in that and making sure that contacts with Singapore those countries on the ball. Uh, and the families that are there in those countries are happening. Uh, we are all in contact with the families. Right before I got on with you, I spoke with a family member of one of the deceased. Uh, again, making sure they know that we're going to be supporting them, not just now, but long after the cameras are gone and even after the ignorant tweets stop. I just want to say just personally, and I think from this show, and I'm sure I speak for you as well, we are grateful in this country to the Latino workers who do the hard work. They are on these construction sites all over this country doing the work that you cannot compel a lot of Americans to do, the back-breaking work that we don't even have enough gratitude to give to them. So our deepest condolences to the families of those six who uh, are gone and are lost, and they were lost doing the work for us to make our country better and to make our economy stronger. Uh I agree, Joy Reid. I'd like to extend a thank you to all the Latino people in this country and my brother for doing construction on all these projects. It's weird that, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deliver a, not a hot take. It's time for weird take. Um, I don't think that Brandon, I, I, under, I, I actually <laughs> understand uh, Mayor Scott's. Yeah, I was kind of surprised, I actually the how much hate he got for that video to be honest I was this like, video no 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 the one before that everyone was talking about where like his first address to the media yeah it was like fine. this is the mayor of baltimore i was like what's what's yeah, wrong I mean, with he didn't say anything bad I yeah don't, i don't get what that that was a bit of like you know no it absolutely was i know we kid and we joke yeah and also but, god bless the people that died and the yeah, workers. Of course. i mean honestly of yeah we joke around but yeah were you guys expecting this take? Yeah. <laughs> were you expecting us to be serious? <laughs> yeah. No, we're being serious. But uh, let me continue to be serious here. I understand his anger at being called a quote-unquote DEI mayor. Because I don't believe that that's the case. I don't think he is a DEI mayor. I don't think he's a mayor because he's black. Um, I think he's a mayor because he's incompetent. And... Uh, that's kind of the point. Like, we've talked about this before. In cities like Baltimore um, that are entirely unanimously Democrat-run, and this goes the same for areas that are completely Republican-dominated. Anytime you have a situation where... Let me get another bone, by the way. This, is, this take requires a bone. Anytime you have a situation where one party... <laughs> Fucking A. Dom, kill the dead air. Anytime you have a party with friends, get beer. Don't take it home with you when they're not finished. That's tacky. That is tacky. Don't be... Nobody likes a... Oh, can I, I grab... I am going to take this 18-pack of Miller Light with... No, <laughs> Obviously. Obviously, no. But anytime you have 
a single party monopoly on an area. People don't understand that a political party is a private company. And when the Democrats or the Republicans, but in this case, in the city of Baltimore and pretty much every major city at this point, um, they don't have any competition. So there's nothing that incentivizes the Democratic Party in Baltimore to actually compete for the vote. The primary election of the Republican Party, the, the general election is, uh, it's, it's moot, it's inert. The only thing that matters in Baltimore City is the primary election for the Democratic Party because whoever wins that nomination will become the nominee. So when you are the leader of that party, call it the CEO or the general manager of the Democratic Party, you are basically selecting whoever you're going to put on as the person you're going to get behind to put up in the top of the ranks at that position. That's who's deciding these positions. It's like getting promoted to manager at the Cheesecake Factory. They're not going to promote the guy who is like the rogue guy who like does things the way he sees it should be done. Yeah, I know we're supposed to like greet a table in five minutes and, and don't give him bread until 10 minutes. But you know what? I'm going rogue. I shoot from the hips. I'm going to fucking I'm going to do things my way. That's not the guy who gets put to the top of the party. So anyone who even gets put in front of your face as the primary candidate for the De Democratic Party is someone that that party believes is going to toe the line to do exactly what the party wants them to do. Brandon Scott is not doing anything outside of that. He is a position holder. He's a placeholder. He doesn't know that. And that's why I don't actually hold any animosity towards him. He's looking at this and understandably so frustrated that people are, you, are, are calling him out as a DEI mayor because he's black. And that's not the case. They would put any inert, useless person in that position because as long as they can get someone who is willing to just do whatever the fuck they're told and not anything else, they will get that job. And that's what, that's what we're watching here. Anybody who actually looks at the city and blames Brandon Scott, you don't understand how it works. Brandon Scott is not even in a position. I mean, technically he is, but he wouldn't even be in that position if he was someone that was actually going to do something outside of what the party wants him to do. You're never going to have the outsider rogue guy get amplified up through the ranks of the Democratic Party. It's just never going to happen. So we have a single party monopoly. Whoever gets that position is the most inert, the most useless, the best placeholder for that position. And he is the current person occupying that place. And yes, his addresses to the city were fine. He does a good job at saying what we already know. This is a terrible thing, blah, 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 blah. But uh, believe it or not, there's a lot more or should be a lot more to being a mayor than that. But uh, unfortunately, that is what that job has become. So in that way, he's actually maybe the best mayor we could ever have. But no disrespect to him as a person. He seems like a fine guy. Weird take. Um, sheesh. Coming up on an hour, folks. Uh, this has been something. Oh, it's been something. I told you we were going to lean back, chill. Drink a coffee, drink an Evan Williams, drink a Miller Lite, smoke a cig. Forget what we're talking about, then remember what we're talking about. Be a Those, little racist. Be a little, just a little <laughs> racist. Give me a little racist on a Thursday. It's opening day for Christ's sake. Come on, sake. it's opening day. Give me one, come on. Um, but yes, this has been live from the studio, the daily edition. I am your host, me. Jimmy Seleski here with my brother, Dom Seleski. We got a long day of moving ahead. Uh, you and Nick will be on the podcast, LFTS podcast, next Saturday. So look forward to that. My cousin, Nick DiCarlo of the Slippery Stallions podcast, uh, the hottest new comics in town. Dom and Nick tearing up the scene. Uh, LFTS podcast across the board. Um, JimmySeleski.com for all your Jimmy Seleski needs if you have any uh until next time folks let's go o's peace peace